2 p.m., it's the afternoon power drive. At 6 p.m., we take off with Flight 97. Weekends are steamy with French connections. Sound up Saturdays and Sunday recharge. We dedicate Power 97.9 FM to you. Discover your champion sound. Power 97.9 FM. Yo, 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 for me, there's a simple rule in politics. Never, ever be surprised by what happens in politics. The face of truth is open. The eyes of truth are bright. The lips of truth are ever closed. The head of truth is upright. The breast of truth stands forward. The gaze of truth is straight. Truth has neither fear nor doubt. Truth has patience to wait. The words of truth are touching. The voice of truth is deep. The law of truth is simple. All you sow, you reap. The soul of truth is flaming. The heart of truth is warm. The mind of truth is clear and firm through rain and storm. Fact are only its shadow. Truth stands above all sin. Great be the battle of life. Truth in the end shall win. The image of truth is the cross. Wisdom's message is its rod. The sign of truth is Christ, and the soul of truth is God. Life of truth is eternal. Immortal is its past. Truth shall hold to the last. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. The dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street. There's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do, and there's no end to it. We know the air is unfit to breathe. Our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living room. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel-belted radios, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to ride. I don't want you to write to your congressman, because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. As promised by the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, we have a Deputy Speaker. And he will be appointed shortly. He'll be sworn in. Somebody says that yours truly should resign his post as a broadcaster. Maybe on news spin, maybe um, as a news anchor. Just resign. Also coming up on our program this afternoon, shouldn't we opening our doors to the Haitians? All of the more between now and 2 o'clock on the most monitored talk show in the world. And that is Newspin on Power 97.9 FM. We are also on the Newspin Facebook page as well as the Newspin YouTube. I'll be taking your call in a bit at 452-2979. That's 452-2979. Along with your WhatsApp calls and messages at 716-2026. 716-2026. And Kimani will be going through some of your comments in the chat room. I wonder if we have any comments in the chat room already that Kimani can go through. Kimani, do we have any comments that you deem worthy of reading right now so early in the broadcast i suspect you saw some comments Tim, no but no no i did not i did not just uh, try to just try to get you off guard <laughs> as usual someone says katie is the new deputy speaker let's see when he is in that seat our rf will act so another comment someone says watching from potter prince but i suspect that's a joke uh, another comment in the chat, someone says... I wouldn't say the joke, you know, because since this broadcast has gotten so much coverage, I mean, beyond the shores of St. Lucia, 
and um, this guy who is pretending to be from Barbados, but who knows, might be right here and be an operative of a political party or two. You know, mm -hmm. people have taken deep interest in it. Um, I imagine that um, that will include the folks over in Haiti, in, Haiti, in Port-au-Prince, in Cap Haitien as well. But that's it in the chat, Tim. All right. Thank you so much. So we heard from the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Mr. Philip J. Pierre. He promised that a new Deputy Speaker would have been appointed today, and that is during a sitting of the House of Assembly. And many of you, if not 100% of you, believed that that person would have come um, from outside the island's parliament. Since St. Lucia's constitution was amended so that somebody who was not a member of the parliament can serve as the deputy speaker as well as somebody who is a member of the house of assembly who is not an elected mp so it, have, it would have caught you a bit of guard to hear that dr kenny anthony there's a he was nominated today as the deputy speaker. Now, based on what transpired immediately after the last German election, I don't believe that Dr. Kenny Anthony wanted to be the deputy speaker. He also made it very clear that he did not want to serve in the cabinet. Why? What was the reason given then? The initial reason was he had some health issues that he had to attend to. And so the Prime Minister said his position would be reviewed six months later. We all know that's now close to three years and that position has not been reviewed. So all of a sudden, according to the Prime Minister, Mr. Jeremiah Norbert had to resign that's according to the Prime Minister. I don't think he had to resign. It's not something that's mandatory. He had to resign. No. This thing was well thought out. It was well planned that Jeremiah Norbert would resign. And Jeremiah Norbert would have been appointed a government minister. And Philip J. P. would have allowed him to serve in the cabinet. And this is me speculating that the third plan would have been to take somebody from outside the island's parliament to serve as the deputy speaker. What happened after that? What caused the prime minister and also the attorney general to have a change of heart? It is because of the intervention of the leader of the parliamentary opposition, whether you like him or not. This is what transpired when he said that amending Section 36 of the island's constitution is insufficient. You also have to amend Section 30, but that would necessitate a referendum taking this to the people, that somebody was not a member of the island's parliament serving as the deputy speaker. And so the Prime Minister said, oh, because it couldn't, they could not challenge it. Uh, the, uh, the, they could have taken it to the court, as was recommended by the leader of the opposition, taken it to the Court of Appeal, but they didn't want to do that. So they would have met with Dr. Kenny Anthony, pleaded with him of Deputy Speaker. And so the announcement was made Earlier today, during the sitting of the island's House of Assembly, you would hear from the Prime Minister of this country, but also um, the first words would have emanated out of the mouth of the Speaker of the House, Mr. Claudius. Members, you, will, you may elect your Deputy Speaker. Mr. Speaker. It has always been the policy and the philosophical position of governments to follow the constitution 
this country under the last government operated for five years without a deputy speaker. We spoke about it and we promised the electorate that when in government, we would ensure that there was a deputy speaker. We kept our promise and we caused that promise to be put in the Constitution of St. Lucia. The Deputy Speaker at the time, the Honorable Jeremiah Norbert, was selected by me to be a Minister of Government, and he had to resign from a Deputy Speaker position. I informed the public of St. Lucia that the next sitting of this Honorable House would have, we would have elected a deputy speaker. And the deputy speaker would have been either from inside the house or outside the house. Either a member of the house or a member who is not presently a member of the house. I never made any statement to say that the deputy speaker would be a member not in the house. Either in the house or out of the house. You check the, the press statement, you see So the misinformation continues. I never said that the deputy speaker would come from out of the house. I never said so. So, Mr. Speaker, it's my honor and my privilege to nominate Dr. Kenny Davis as deputy speaker. Are there any other nominees? As we second. Oh, member for so Speaker, I beg to second the nomination. So noted. Are there any other nominees? If there are no other nominees, I hereby declare. Please, please. The member, so, yes. Yes, member for Castro Central. Mr. Speaker, I wish to nominate the member for Miku South to be the deputy speaker. Well, you can't nominate the leader of the opposition. <laughs> Who also happens to be the member for Miku South. If there are no other nominees, I hereby declare the member for Viewfort South elected deputy speaker unopposed. So first he was nominated and then the election process resulted in Dr. Kenny Anthony being deemed the deputy speaker of the House of Assembly. Well suited individual, lecturer in law at the University of the West Indies, constitutional lawyer. I think maybe, I mean, in the history of Sinusha, this would be an individual who was best qualified to serve in that position. But definitely, when you analyze this, this is not how the Sinusha Labour Party administration expected that things would have played out because they would have gone through all the trouble of amending the island's constitution to make it possible for somebody who was not a member of the House, an elected member of the House, to serve as deputy. So somebody can also serve as the deputy speaker. So this is how this got. But... I can imagine that this Labour Party administration wanted things to end today. So congratulations to Deputy Speaker Dr. Kenny Anthony, former Prime Minister of St. Lucia, and also like to welcome back the Speaker of the House, Mr. Claudius Francis. Know that we can be ill from time to time and especially these days, every time somebody is ill, very often we hear of their demise. So um, I'm happy that it appears that the Speaker of the House 
is recuperating nicely. 452-2979, 452-2979. Your WhatsApp calls and messages, 716-2026. 716-2026. And, of course, they will be going through some of your comments in the chat room. So there is this Bajan national, this male, who has taken a liking to yours truly. And I don't like him. All right, it's not about hatred, but it's not about you liking me and me not liking you, etc. So the latest voice note that is in circulation, and this is the last time that you'll hear me playing his voice notes. He is calling for my resignation. And I will not the voice note in its entirety. I would have caused him to disseminate a second voice note is how I reacted to his emotional and unwarranted statement that he made last week in light of me expressing my point of view with regard to those gangs those marauding gangs over in Haiti. This is the latest from this individual, and he says a couple things. One in particular that should cause every right-thinking individual, including yours truly, henceforth, to totally dismiss anything. Any those voice notes, I think, could be dumped on Nelson Street in Barbados. Listen. In listening to the program on Newspin today, I realize that contrary to Mr. Polion acceding the fact that he was out of order and made reprehensible statements about the people of Haiti, he decided that he was going to double down and defend his position with regard to the statements that he made in an effort to reinforce what he believes is a position of no wrongdoing. I wish to say to you, Mr. Polio, not only did you reinforce to the people of your beloved Helen of the West in St. Lucia that you are unfit for the job of radio announcer or media representative, but you are also clearly a representative of the UWP party, which of negative growth over the past decade. Oh, uh-huh. this is what this is all about. This is a UWP versus SLP thing. So I have decided to totally dismiss this individual, disregard anything that he has to say going forward. And this is the last time you'll be hearing any clip from this individual on this broadcast. Certainly worthy of the thing, anything that he has to say, because it's purely political party. UWP and this guy could be somewhere in Denary or in Miku, and he's being given a particular task to perform. So I will ignore him. But you'll be hearing more on this whole Haiti um, situation in just a moment. It's one, definitely, that is crying out for um, attention from all of us in St. Lucia, the rest of the um, region, as well as the international community. Uh, this that we are, and it is lingering. Um, <laughs> there's no denying that we have to continue um, to see how best we can improve the situation there. We have a WhatsApp call as we say good afternoon to you. This is uh, New Spin. You are on the air. Good afternoon to you, caller. Mr. Pullion, Hi. how are you? I'm okay, sir. Good afternoon to you. Yes, sir. I <clears throat> I agree with you that you should not be given this individual the time of day. But uh, some of us are, are going to call him out and challenge him. So you don't have to do that. Um, yesterday in the clip, he attempted to lecture you and accuse you of all sorts of things. Um, 
that is he is part of the group of a group in the Caribbean that is responsible for the lack of progress in the developing world of our region. He and others like him have intentionally failed and refused to acknowledge that there is a word in the English language that is called accountability. We all must take responsibility for what we do and be held accountable. The United States, the IMF, and France, and whoever else he chooses to blame, is politically lame and unattractive. He knows so much about <laughs> neo-colonialism and the new imperialism, but the more the more it became evident and clear to everyone that he knew nothing about what is important for Haiti today, except for the fact that he is an excuse maker. Which country does he know in the Americas that was not at some point under colonial rule? Wasn't Barbados under colonial rule? It was so much under colonial rule that it was called Little Britain. Why is Barbados not like Haiti today? Why do they speak Portuguese in Brazil and Spanish in Argentina and Chile? Because of colonial rule. As students of history, we all wish that there was no such thing as a colonial past. But if life has given us lemons, we ought to grab the bull of life and our circumstances by the horn and make lemonade. America, Canada, and Australia were all under colonial rule once upon a time. So was India. Look at these countries today. We must stop making excuses, and people like him must stop making excuses and forge a future, help forge a future for ourselves and our people. Why Haiti? The answer, Mr. Polio, is simple. The political leaders of Haiti, for as long as we know, have raped the country of everything and its resources and they have used corruption to enrich themselves the gentleman would not even acknowledge that there are gangs in haiti but he referred to them as so-called gangs who are defending their sovereign space this is the hallmark of ignorance and revisionist history haiti has a unique problem because the destabilizing forces in Haiti have always been local and have never been international. Between 1986 and 2021, six of Haiti's over 20 leaders have been overthrown and assassinated as recently as 2021. This is not the IMF and America and the neo-colonialism. This is Haiti. France did not create barbecue and his gang of colleagues. America is not there shooting at the police and shutting down the airport. What I saw America do was send the Secretary of State, Mr. Blinken, down to Jamaica at a meeting of CARICOM leaders and offered to give 300 million US dollars to help Haiti. It, it is the fact that Haiti must be responsible for Haiti. And as in any other case in history, the Haitian people have been victimized for as long as we can document. They must get back the spirit that is represented in their history during the 13-year battle from 1791 to 1804 in order to achieve their independence. And they must rise to their own feet again today and demand better for themselves, their children, and their children's future. Mr. Polio, in the meantime... Stay focused on your work and do not be distracted by those who make excuses for a living. Highlight the issues that are concerning to St. Lucia and the region as we try to motivate St. Lucians and our partners and our people in the region to learn from their mistakes and also the mistakes that others have made. Don't ever give up. Don't be discouraged. Don't give up continue to serve your island and St. Lucia will be better because of people like you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much for calling. We have a call, 452-2979. Good afternoon. You're on the air. Well, good afternoon. How are you? I'm okay, caller. Good afternoon to you. Oh, I, I know you're strong. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, four, oh, four. Tim, this morning I heard another radio station 
that the host of that particular program, now I'm not going to mention the radio station, insists that you apologize with the statement that was made. And then other callers call him and blah, blah, blah. And then they were, they, I mean, they're trying to say what you mean, what, what, whatever you said was not mean, I mean, you know, added to the problem in Haiti. Tim, I know you can defend yourself. I mean, I'm not calling this show to defend anybody. I mean, a talk show host have a responsibility for they making any statement and they know exactly what they should say. But if I may add, a little bit on that. Now, I really don't want to dwell. I know ever since 80 issues has read uh, at New Spin, in New Spin, although the problems are bigger there, but then we have our own sort of problem in St. Lucia as well. Um, Tim, when people talk about, oh, the problem in Haiti, and you said, let the gangs kill themselves. Tim, I had a, a conversation with a particular police officer in St. Lucia, and I said, so, what are you doing with the gangs that are killing, you know? And you know what the guy tell me? I was surprised. He said, let them kill themselves. And one day there will be there will, there will not be any gang. But I said, so if, what they are doing there sometimes, innocent passerby can be caught in it. He said, let, let them do the thing and that, that is out of the control. So somebody is bigger here to do something if there is a need to do it. So why the hell that you cannot say let the gang, even if you say it, and I can say it too, because when Barbecue was interviewed, he was insist that the prime minister should resign and there would be a transition government so that they will at least maybe come down the violence or lay down the arms. But the prime minister resigned and now he's telling you he's not going to lay down his arms. War has just started. So what really do they want up there? What do they want? You understand what I'm saying, Tim? Yes. What really is this people want? Because your problem was with the interim or caretaker prime minister. He is now under pressure. He's in Puerto Rico. He's resigned. The gang right now should be go back to the to, 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 to the caretaker, whatever the arrangement they're trying to do with CARICOM, to have, to have a, uh, somebody to hold the place, to prepare the country for election, and to do something. But now we're telling you, we will fight to control our sovereignty. And we, but what, who are you fighting? You are killing people on the streets, murdering people, kidnapping. I mean, it is just a mayhem, mayhem in that country. And now you have this caller now, so-called Barbadian. I don't know where. He probably in St. Lucia, like you said. He insists now. He forget about all the issues in Haiti. Right now he talk about UWP and SLP. So you can see how these people, and you quite rightly don't give a damn about apologize for nothing. He has now put politics in it. If you are Barbadian, you claim, but you are putting politics between red and yellow in St. Lucia and want to accuse the host of that show as though he's one side. He's one side. I mean, can you imagine? Well, what I, I, I understand guy? the guy's motivation from today. I understand it clearly. And that is why I do not intend to focus on anything that he has to exactly. say anymore. And I will not use this um, this uh, platform uh, to give him any kind of publicity or leverage. Okay? You're quite right. We have too many problems to focus on. And to, somebody is in the dark. Nobody knows where he are. And now he has taken another issue now. And I quite the caller that called you, Elwin Central from the state. That was a brilliant statement. These guys have no idea what is happening in Haiti. Now he has switched from Haiti, and he's talking about politics. You're, he accusing you now of taking a side. The, you know, I just sometimes it's amazing how these people, and I, I believe these guys are in St. Lucia, whether it's a Barbadian living in St. Lucia, or maybe trying to do something on whatever party he is to see whether they can remove, because you are the only journalist. Because the, the, the other session this morning said Timof is a responsible and he have one of the most popular programs called New Spin in the Afternoon. A, a program that is generating thousands and thousands of viewers and callers. So he said Timof, you know how to deal with what is happening. So we have too many issues 
and you are the only journalist when those things talk shows when those things are happening you are letting us know what is happening especially if you have a new speaker, deputy speaker in the house yeah, i mean you are not just focusing on one issue you understand so you cannot allow that guy no name guy wherever he is hiding and continue to pretend as though he's so concerned about haiti but now we have switched all the way with what he said about it, he, he's jumping on another thing. You should never play nothing that that guy, whether audio or anything, he had, he had, whatever he plays. Nothing you shouldn't play that on your skin. Continue your program and let the people of St. Lucia know the problems that are in St. Lucia so that we might not become a virgin or becoming a little Haiti. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling. WhatsApp says, what that man from Barbados said was planned in St. Lucia. What's in the chat room, Kimani? In the chat room, someone says, it's important to check the context in which Tim made that statement. Another comment, so long Haiti is in that problem, they must blame themselves. Tim, you're a doctor. Tim Orfi, prescribe the Bayesian some medication. Someone says that this man is in love with you, Tim, looking for a Lucian boyfriend and is watching you um another so he's listening i believe he is like tim says the most monitored talk show in the world but that's it in the chat tim thank you so much let's see if we have a call good afternoon to you via whatsapp this is new spin you're on the air hello good afternoon yes, Timothy. good afternoon good afternoon to you sir i just want to commend you i just want to commend you on the powerful talk show and just want to encourage you to continue um, I'm not even going to comment on this guy's foolish comments because it's not worth um, my wasting my time. I uh, just wanted to um, ask the question, Timothy. We had a, a, a dedication of the house going to, I think, was Haiti to analyze the problem, if I'm correct, or was there not... Um, a, a group of eminent people... Or some, uh a group of eminent people, former Prime Minister Kenny Anthony, right. former Prime Minister of the but, Bahamas, and a former a Prime report, Minister of Jamaica. Is, was there any report as to the uh, suggest way? Because it, to me, it's, it, if you're going there, I mean, it's to come uh, analyze and then give feedback. It would it would be nice to 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 hear from them as to the way forward um, with 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 um, the way forward for for Haiti. Uh, at, um, uh, Timothy, that you know, th there is that saying, Le Bab Kamawadu Pudife, um, um, Uze Sao. Mm -hmm. We need to also look at our country, look at us, uh, you know, holistically and, and, and analyze where we are with so many violent activities and acts on our in, in our little island. And just today, I'm hearing. That you know there was that uh, another uh, uh, an incident, you know it, it, there is that anger, that rage, that 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 frustration on the island, and you know what is there to help curb all of those situations. You know these are the things I think we should really be homing on, and and you know leave this this kind of fake Bajan accent individual in his section. And by the way, tell him holy section, eh? Because, you know, we, we have our things to deal with. He has problems in Barbados. Tell him go and find solutions for the, 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 the Mario problems they have in Barbados. Thank you. All right, sir. Thank you so much for calling. 452-2979. WhatsApp calls and messages 716-2026. Somebody says that, Tim, do you remember Barbadian uh, Professor Hilary Beckles and his redefinition of treachery and traitor just to suit the SLP agenda? You see how the politics has been exposed. Uh, let's see if we have uh, some more of your messages there. Somebody says there, uh, well-played reaction regarding the voice note in circulation. I totally agree not to entertain this individual as he's only seeking attention and mileage with these voice notes. It's not worth the time on our airwaves. In the chat room, Kimani, any reports? Someone says that that man is a labor hack and it was planned in St. Lucia. I stand with Tim. Another comment, uh, Tim, let's move on. Tell the callers you don't want to discuss, mate. If he knows so much about Haiti and its history, then get on a boat and go to Haiti and solve the problems there. What about St. opening its borders to our Haitian brothers and sisters? There's so many of them, the thousands, over 300 
thousand Haitians displaced as we speak. So many of them um, are facing starvation. What are we going to do? And that's a question I was put to the Prime Minister of St. Lucia uh, during his cabinet briefing yesterday, and we'll get a response in just a moment. But I don't know if you have any more comments from the chat room. Someone says they cannot clean their own backyard but want to clean someone else's own. Uh, nothing caller, we heard nothing. That is the SLP we are against. They feel that they do not have to account for nothing. That's it, Tim. Somebody says there, Tim, when will someone come out and speak about the issue of contraband coming over the fence at the island prison or the island's prison? It's happening every day. Still to come, should we open our doors to our brothers and sisters over in Haiti? A reaction from the man for national security, Mr. Philip J. Pierre. This is the most monitored talk show in the world. Newspin. It all started with a penny. For over 85 years, we have invested in our farmers, fishermen, people, and our country. When we were called to serve, we were here. We understand what is valuable to our people and our country. That is why we support all industries, including tourism. We are the bridge towards a brighter future and economic growth. When our people, government, and businesses called upon us, we were here. 85 years later, First National Bank St. Lucia Limited is here for you. Lazarus's funeral home is here for you. Lazarus's private cemetery offers a peaceful resting place for your loved ones. With tranquil settings, visitation, and reflection, we believe in the compassionate care of all our departed loved ones. Lazarus's private cemetery, let us help you create a final resting place. Make it special, make it Lazarus's funeral home, your friend in a time of need. Payment plans are available for tombs. Call us in Vidbuta at 452-7491 or in New Dock Road, VA4, 454-6555. Lucilex remote options are available to serve you every weekday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Call or send a WhatsApp message to 285-6796, 285-7859, 285-3593, 285-3329, or 285-8640. Or send an email to customer support at lucilex.com for assistance. Lucilec encourages you to use the available options for doing business with us remotely. It's time to spice up your meals with KFC's March Madness special menu. Rally up for our crispy, delicious nugget. Grab eight pieces for only $10 or elevate your meal with 12 pieces for $15. Snatch up our nugget combos, now serving eight or 12 pieces with a biscuit, fries, and a drink. Spite from $22 to $17 or from $28 to $23. We've got the little ones covered with five-piece nugget meal with a biscuit and drink all twisted up with mac and cheese, each for a tiny price of $10 and $11. For the hearty eaters, five crispy strips served with fries and a drink are all yours for $20. It's a limited time feat. Make your way to KFC and treat yourself to these March Madness specials while they last. KFC, it's finger licking good. In these modern times, the field of medicine has become so advanced that no one has to suffer any longer before they can be seen by a specialist doctor. La Clinique du Corps is proud to be the only healthcare provider in St. Lucia to offer the best and most experienced specialist doctors who are capable to first correctly diagnose and then successfully treat health conditions such as chronic back pain, spinal injury, sciatica, numbness, lupus, arthritis, joint pain, facial nerve pain, knee, heel and shoulder pain, cramps and carpal tunnel syndrome. Also available at La Clinique de Corps, complete nerve tests to detect nerve injury or muscle disease. All health insurances are accepted at La Clinique de Corps. So walk again pain-free with La Clinique de Corps. To book an appointment, please call 451-6559 or WhatsApp 721-9950. New vibe and the lingo. More upon more said the tingo. Flow if we not right. More, more upon more upon more with flow. More data, more talk for sure. More WhatsApp video cast up. Unlimited talk so you not stop chat. Rebate. 
just got better. Loaded with even more data and unlimited talk. Take advantage of WhatsApp and all its features with our new prepaid plans. Unleash your creativity with more social media. Dial star 129 number sign to activate. Now that's the new vibe in the lingo. Yes. More upon more, sell the tingo. Sell the tingo. It's more with flow, now you really know. Catch it now. All these deals make you save more. Get more. more. Nightmares. Dependable neighborhood fallacy. You'll notice that upon entry, you are greeted by caring professional staff, attentive to your every need. Your prescriptions are always treated with a high degree of confidentiality, and we pride ourselves on providing speedy, efficient service. We carry a wide array commonly requested over the counter products, and our prices are very competitive. We offer blood pressure testing, blood sugar, and cholesterol testing. We're open to fill your prescriptions Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Come visit Sadhu's Gas Station on the Miku Highway or call us at 572-6840 or WhatsApp 461-6840 for more information. Night Meds Pharmacy. We are your community med store. To start. Shift into your savings gear this March at Automotive Arts as we launch our March Madness Sale. Pull up at any of our branches this March and save 20% off on all car accessories. Roll out with fantastic deals on tires of up to 30% off. And if you're missing some key tools for your toolkit, no problem. We're offering 15% off on all tools store-wide. But that's not all. Shop now and enjoy exclusive in-store specials on car care, lubricants, and more. Don't miss out on the action. The March Madness sale is happening right now at Automotive Art. Automotive Art, your car, our passion. Terms and conditions apply. See stores for details. Transforming St. Lucia through football innovation and excellence. The St. Lucia Semi-Pro Football League provides a pathway for the professional and personal development of young footballers, leading to community enhancement across Ireland. Great opportunity. In 2024, 10 district leagues will compete for the Premier Cup and 9 district leagues will face off for the Super Cup. 81 games in 4 venues. Come support your community as you witness the first ever St. Lucia Semi-Pro Football League Championships. Competitive football. Ball, passionate players and striking goals and it's in. in collaboration with the government of St. Lucia and the St. Lucia Football Association the semi-pro football league is leveraging football to transform lives and so the referee brings the 90 minutes to an end This is the most monitored talk show in the world and our question of the day. It reads, why should St. Lucia relax visa rules for Haitians? Why should St. Lucia relax visa rules for Haitians? What say you to this, Kimani? Should we open our doors to our brothers and sisters over in Haiti? Since we are taking so much of interest in what is happening there all of a sudden, and uh, we believe that the yours truly, Timothy Polian, should be cru um, crucified because of the comment that he made last week. So we are demonstrating that we really care about the Haitians. We love them. We want to break bread with them and so on. Why not open our doors, St. Lucia, to the Haitians? I think we should, <clears throat> before we make such a decision or decide on such a, an issue, we should focus on the citizen security, the security of our citizens. When we have that under wraps, then we can decide, you know what, maybe we should open our doors to the Haitians. Great point, Kimani. Great point. <laughs> and, uh, and a safe one, too. <laughs> you can have a talk show on both of your, your hosts. You know, they, they are being scrutinized by the public and they are being <laughs> raked over the coals, you know. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you don't have any broadcast whereby one can hold on for the other. <laughs> so at least if the Haitians come to Seleucia, um and they arrest me, take me to Port-au-Prince mm -hmm. and Cap Haitien, you know, just to mm -hmm. see what <laughs> hold the fort in the meantime. All right. In response, somebody says global environment where uh, 
okay, agree with your diligence. Okay, I don't I can't understand that. Right? I think it's them all come, including notorious barbecue, so they can start an uprising and overthrow the PJP government on our behalf. Some of your comments in response to our question: Why should Senusha relax visa rules for Haitians? This is how the Prime Minister responded. When the question was posed to him during the pre-cabinet briefing on Monday of this week, and of course, that is just yesterday. Can you help me with this contribution to the region? Um, like you mentioned, would you have for Haitians to come here? Would you now, allow refugees also to come here? Every country must do what is good for their own interests. That, that is clear. St. Lucia is a, is, is a small country. Right? You only have 248 square miles. We don't have the space to accept refugees. No, we don't. So I will not be a hypocrite and say, yes, St. Lucia will be able to accept his refugees. We can't. We are a small country. <laughs> Vast countries. The US. The US had a policy where any Cuban who reached America was free. You know that? Are you aware of that? Wet food, dry food. Yeah, you know that, right? <laughs> wet food, dry food. It is called wet food. I sure Mr. Lord knows that. It's called wet food. Mr. Andrew knows that. Wet food, dry food. Once you are Cuban, once you lie in America, you're free. Wet food, dry food. Right? Now, St. Lucia is in no position to have any points like that. I'm not going to be a hypocrite and tell you yes. We express our solidarity. We can work with, with CARICOM, but we can't, you know, we're not in a position to accept Haitian refugees. Prime Minister, is that currently on the table of discussion? No, it's CARICOM? not. It's not. But I'm just making it, making it clear. We, we don't have the size. We don't have the size. Obviously, we have, we, have, we, have, we have the social services. But we support any to improve the situation in Haiti. But I'm not going to be a hypocrite. We can't accept refugees. We can't. Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre speaking ahead of his cabinet uh, meeting yesterday. 452-2979, call 716-2026, and that is 716 2026. We have a call via WhatsApp. Good afternoon, you are on the air. Hello. Oh, good afternoon, Tim. Yes, ma'am. Good Hello. afternoon to you. Tim, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Hi, I'm ringing from the diaspora. Yes. Where are you calling from? Um, first time caller. Where are you calling I'm from? I'm really from London. Okay. London. Yes, go ahead, please. First time caller. Thanks for calling. I didn't expect you to answer so quickly. Why? Because <laughs> normally I hear people are saying it takes so long to get through to you, especially Rick. Yeah, that's because. Tim, that's um, because just to let you know, so, yeah. I. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Just to let you know, um, I've been listening to you now for about. Um, two and a half years. I just got interested in um, in solution politics after the last election, and I find it quite fascinating. However, the reason I'm ringing is because um, I had a, a conversation with somebody I met in church um, last week regarding a, an experience she had in Saint Lucia with her prime minister. So I'm nervous. I'm gonna I'm gonna calm down a little bit. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous mm -hmm. um, because I know you've got you're the most monitored show in the world. So I'm quite nervous. However, um, I was speaking to a young lady and she asked me where I was from. I said to her, I was from St. Lucia. She said 20 years ago, she came to St. Lucia or she was planning to come to St. Lucia for her husband. Her husband is from St. Lucia. And she, um, and she approached uh, um, Kenny Anthony and wanted to open um, a training school in St. Lucia. She sent him her, her proposal and he seemed to be quite um, interested so when she arrived in St. Lucia, the following week, she met up with him and then um, she went through her proposal. Kenny said to her that his children are being educated in um, out of St. Lucia. They're not abroad. Um, he and he hoped they, doesn't, they don't return to St. Lucia. He also said to her well, that... Well, um, well, well, Carla, we don't know if that's true, eh? so we treat it as hearsay. Well, I remember you yes. said... you well, said, this is what... But you said two years ago, and Dr. Anthony was not the Prime no, Minister of St. Lucia two I years didn't. ago. I said 20, I said oh, 20, 20 years ago. 20 years 20 ago. Year. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. 20 years ago. I said, I know he wasn't, because I've been following um, your um, 
solution program. politics. So yeah. I know he wasn't. Mm. 20 years ago, and she is not a St. Lucian. She's from a neighboring island, um, a neighboring island. So she's not a St. Lucian. She's got no, no um, political affiliation to any. And she did not know I was I, I was um, interested in in, um, in politics. She just mentioned it to me when she knew I was, I was St. Lucian. And she said to me that what he said to her was that um, he is not interested in opening um, any training school in St. Lucia because what he wants to do is to keep the people of St. Lucia illiterate. Okay. And the lady now, did not up. know me. Now, and this up. is what she told me. I, I would I'm like, telling I, you what I, I the would, lady told me. Right, that says this. But i like to put my neck on the block and say, I don't believe that and that is not true. I don't, Dr. Kenny okay, Anthony, okay, so, Dr. Kenny Anthony will not say something like that. No. Okay, so okay, if you don't believe that, how many, how many um, um, schools has Kenny Anthony yeah. opened? How many? Um, yeah, just just explain that to me. Since the Saint Lucia Labour Party came into office, they have opened a number of secondary schools um, on the island, mm-hmm. and this resulted in the end of the shift system. To to their credit, a number of schools were constructed in St. Lucia between 1997 um, and now. But before that, of course, other governments would have constructed, the United Lucas Party government would have constructed schools as well. But I don't I'm believe that. the information I, the lady gave me. I don't well, buy that. I don't whether buy you that. believe it or not, mm-hmm. well, that's fine. This is what she told me. Right. And I just thought it was quite interesting. I just wanted to kind of just say it. Actually, I, said, I did say to her, would, would you like to, to call um, a radio station that I, that I listened to to um to give that information she said to me obviously i want to come back to st lucia i don't want no problem with anybody in st lucia but i i'm not scared of anybody in st lucia so i can <laughs> call a radio station and say what i have to say mm-hmm. and i'm just telling you what she told me she did not know who i was i just said to her i was from st lucia so whether you want to believe it whether anybody else in st lucia wants to believe it that's what the information was given to me and that's all so i just thought you know i will say because i was quite shocked by it okay ma'am so We'll take it from there, okay? How long have, you. Have, how long have you been in the UK, away from St. Lucia? I've been in the UK for about 40 years. Oh, 40 um, years, okay. I was in St. Lucia last year. I was in St. Lucia last year. Um, so it's not as though I don't come to St. Lucia. I do come to St. Lucia. And I see you. And I see what's what's happening in St. Lucia. 40 years so in I, the UK. So I'm just not going to call. 40, 40 years in yes, the UK and, and you sound 21. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to call you more often now because I, <laughs> I like the compliment. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay, ma'am. Thank you okay, so much then. for calling. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, all the best You're welcome. to you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Four five two two nine seven nine. WhatsApp calls and messages 716-2026. I think the, um, the former prime minister is too progressive to have that kind of mindset. I don't think that's Kenny Anthony at all. Your comments in the chat room, Kimani. In the chat room, someone says, No, Tim, we don't want them over here. Let's send whatever we have to help uh, someone else says, no, Tim, if we can send help to them, we will. We don't want no little Haiti in Fair Helen. But I just want to point out, what I'm pointing out is the hypocrisy. You know, we love the Haitians, we love them, and the 1804, is, uh, they got independent, etc., and kill Timothy for, some the, for the Haitians. If they get to kill me, they'll kill me for the Haitians because of the statement that I made. But no, 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 no. We can't open our doors to the Haitians. No, we don't want them in St. Lucia. We can't afford. We, we are too small. We are too small. But yes, still, my good friend, the CMO, said we should have more babies, right? Mm-hmm. So we need. We don't have enough people in St. Lucia, right? Does not strengthen <laughs> the, the point, Kimani? <laughs> to some degree, Tim. No, not to some to degree. Some degree. I'm right or I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. But you can. We need can... more babies. So have more children, little children from you know, the orphanage and so on from Haiti. Bring them into Saint Lucia. It does make sense, you know. It really does. They look like us. They're speaking the Creole and everything else. <laughs> no. But to your point, Tim, about the hypocrisy, I think you could want to help someone and still have your own boundaries. We may want to help, well, not me. We do want to help Haiti, but at the same time, we also have to look at the interests of our people. That doesn't mean we should open our borders. So why the entire, Car- almost the entire Caribbean community say no to the Haitians? They have visa restrictions. I think it's only maybe St. Vincent that has opened its doors to the Haitians. The Barbadians, I don't think, on them. The Jamaicans, the St. Lucians, you know. I might be opening another kind of homes there, you know. But we, we don't want the Haitians. But we want to stay, you know, give them that treatment, that love from a distance, 
Maybe that's what they need, Tim. <laughs> we have another call via WhatsApp. Good afternoon. This is Newspin. You're on the air. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon, Timothy. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon to Hi, you. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Kimani, sorry. <laughs> um, Tim, I'm just, I guess I'm so mad that I'm forgetting everything. I normally, I'm calling about flu, and I have a serious problem with flu today. Normally, I pay my bill. Well, I live out of St. Louis, of course. I pay my bill online every month. Now, for some reason, this month I'm going, I'm going in to pay my bill, and it's asking me for a verification code. Put in the verification code where it's the number it's supposed to go in. Hello? Hello? Okay, we have lost the call. Hello? Okay, we lost the caller. You can call back then. 452-2979. Your WhatsApp calls and messages 716-2026. And, of course, we have your comments in the chat room. And we have your WhatsApp messages. Uh, if we have any of your WhatsApp messages to go through right now. Um, let's see there. I think we have a call. Let's take that call instead. Good afternoon. You're on the air. Via WhatsApp. Good afternoon. Any Hello, good afternoon. Three times journalist of the year. Mr. Trophy Polio, what's happening? Good afternoon to you, sir. I am great. What up to the great Kabadi? Hello, good afternoon. The late trophy right. keeper okay. of, the, of India. The feedback, the feedback, sir. Take care of it for us, please. It's irritating. Take care of the feedback. Good now? Yes, better. Go ahead, please. Okay, I, I don't worry about... I'm not going to talk about that hate thing and you. I don't talk about that at all because I think that's organized crime. That's organized crime. And I think the red of, I think the red of, the red of St. Lucia is involved. Okay, that's what I think. But I'll go a little further. I heard Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre, a leader of the Bogus Gang, John B. government, said St. Lucia is too small too small to accept any Haitians, any refugees. My question to him, I remember when the great man was prime minister, was in office, and the great man said, Venezuelans have to get visas to enter. He, he, make, a, he, he make a song and dance saying, they are our brothers, they are our sisters. Let them in, let them in, let them in. I want to know if St. Lucia has shrunk since. You understand know what I'm saying, Tim? Yeah. Here it is. The Venezuelans want, he is saying don't, uh, to let the Venezuelans in. And now, he, now he's in government, when he was in opposition, and now he's in government, he's saying St. Lucia, St. Lucia is too small. You can understand that? Mm hmm. This guy just did that. You guys just... I'm not dumb like that. Yeah, I'm telling you something. I'm not dumb like most solutions, you know. Let me continue. Richard Frederick. Yes, Richard Frederick. Today, he nominated the great man as deputy speaker. But, the, but Richard Frederick again once more made a fool of it. A fool of himself. That's why I tell you, Tim, if he was in Barbados, he would have been the biggest clown in Barbados. He do not even know the constitution of St. Lucia, which says that the leader of the op leader of the opposition, the great man Sir Adam Michael Shaste, cannot be nominated because leader of the opposition. And he sat down with a tail between his legs like a beaten jackass. You understand what I'm saying, Tim? This guy does just kind of put on a show, trying to impress the, 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 the Malawis slash poorest of the poor, and then got a clue. Here we got the, a one man in the House Assembly, the great man, running all running up, up a tree. The Speaker of the House have to come in the come in the house today. Have to come in, have to come in today because if he didn't come today, they could have the house. Because they cannot pick a deputy unless the speaker is there. You understand what I'm saying? 
because the great man would take them to court. And they didn't know that, they didn't even know that law. They didn't even know that thing. When they go around beating them, beating them up, beating them up and talking nonsense all over the streets. And the, the press of Sedusha, not even putting no heat on those guys. And they want to talk about you. They want to talk about you, Tim. Yes, you just give me pressure. I don't worry about your pressure. I don't worry about you and your pressure. But you are three times journalist of the year. That's why that's why they have to ban that. Because they, they cannot win it. Because what they are, they are caca. The, the Bogus gang are garbage. The great man by himself run them up a tree like like, like what they are, Mogus. Every week, every week, every day, every day, every day, during the week, something, something with those guys. They can't get nothing right. Tim, Rick Williams should be a trillionaire today. Because let me tell you something. This solution, these guys, everything these guys say is current, you know. Two and three and four nonsense come out the mouth or, 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 or what they've done during the week, you know, man. These guys are horrible, you know. That, that, that whole assembly is a circus. That whole assembly is a circus. These guys don't have a clue. It's 15, 18, 20 of them against the great man. And the, and the great man running all of them up a tree. Have you, have you ever seen such? Have you ever seen such? Hence why they want the great man and, of course, Mr. Guy Joseph out of the House of Assembly. Because those men are too brilliant for them. And they want solutions to remain dumb. Dumb matter what they are. Tim, have a nice day. You too, sir. Thank you so much for calling. Still to come on the broadcast, more of our discussion, more of your calls. And somebody says, Tim is an advocate. As we continue to monitor New Spin on Power 97.9 FM, we are also on the YouTube channel as well as on There is only one option when they arrive. Our services will make the dead look alive. With Boutey and Buford, accessibility. Remember, we have the only private cemetery. No one can match our prices from coffin to corsage. Personalized service you get when Lazarus take charge. Quality service, no package to make your wallet bleed. Lazarus is your true friend in your time of need. Lucilex remote options are available to serve you every weekday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Call or send a WhatsApp message to 285-679-685-7859-285-3593-285-3329 or 285-8640 or send an email to customer support at lucilex.com for assistance. Lucilex encourages you to use the available options for doing business with us remotely. It all started with a penny for over 85 years we have invested in our farmers fishermen people and our country when we were called to serve we were here we understand what is valuable to our people and our country that is why we support all industries including tourism we are the bridge towards a brighter future and economic growth when our people, government, and businesses called upon us, we were here. 85 years later, First National Bank St. Limited is here for you. Ah! Catch the new vibe and the lingo. More upon most of the tingo. It's more wet flow if you didn't know. All these deals is a winner. Okay. More! More pan, more pan, more wet flow. More data, more talk for sure. More WhatsApp, video cast up. Unlimited talk, so you're not stop chat. Flow prepaid combo plans just got better. Loaded with even more data and unlimited talk. Take advantage of WhatsApp and all its features with our new prepaid plans. Unleash your creativity with more social media. Dial star 129 number sign to activate. Now that's the new vibe in the lingo. Yes. More pan, more sell the tingo. Sell the tingo. It's more wet flow, now you really know. More. Get more! 
The field of medicine has become so advanced that no one has to suffer any longer before they can be seen by a specialist doctor. La Clinique de Corps is proud to be the only healthcare provider in St. Lucia to offer the best and most experienced specialist doctors who are capable to first correctly diagnose and then successfully treat health conditions such as chronic back pain, spinal injury, sciatica, numbness, lupus, arthritis, joint pain, facial nerve pain, knee, heel and shoulder pain, cramps and carpal tunnel syndrome. Also available at La Clinique de Corps, complete nerve tests to detect nerve injury or muscle disease. All health insurances are accepted at La Clinique de Corps. So walk again pain-free with La Clinique de Corps. Please call 451-6559 or WhatsApp. 721-9950 Shift into your savings at Automotive Arts We launch at any of our branches All car accessories Roll out with fantastic deals on tires of up to 30% off if you're missing some key tools for your toolkit, no problem. We're offering 15% off on all tools store-wide. But that's not all. Shop now and enjoy exclusive in-store specials on car care, lubricants, and more. Don't miss out on the action. The March Madness Sale is happening right now at Automotive Arts. Automotive Arts, your car, our passion. Terms and conditions apply. See stores for details. It's time to spice up your meals with KFC's March Madness special menu. Rally up for our crispy, delicious nugget. Grab eight pieces for only $10 or elevate your meal with 12 pieces for $15. Snatch up our nugget combos, now serving eight or 12 pieces with a biscuit, fries, and a drink. Buy from $22 to $17 or from $28 to $23. We've got the little ones covered with five-piece nugget meal with a biscuit and drink, all twisted up with mac and cheese, each for a tiny price. Party Eaters, five crispy strips served with fries and a drink are all yours for $20. It's a limited time feat. Make your way to KFC and treat yourself to these March Madness specials while they last. KFC, it's finger licking good. On Easter Sunday, the biggest brunch party in the West returns. Easter Sunday, March 31st, Sioux Frame Mini Stadium. Featuring international sensation, Dennis and John, and the DJ Project Live. Also, MTX, A1 Jugglers, Sir Lancelot, Hype Kid, DJ JH and Dallo, Levi Chin, DJ Irv, Power FM DJs, MC Donnerville. From 12 noon, we rise. Look at people in here tonight. That's what we do. Regular tickets are $80 and $350 for a VIP terrace area. Get your tickets online at www.4circlestickets.com. Mambo's Bar and Courts in Souffre and Courts Ready Cash Island Wide. Get VIP and group tickets with no cash at Courts Ready Cash. Press code SLAY in Orange. Rise 4. The Celebration, an Optimum Event Production. Platinum Sponsors, Courts Ready Cash and Power 97.9 FM. Gold Sponsor, Bank of St. Lucia, others, Tom Beer, Strongbow, and Islands. In the heart of every community lies a dream waiting to come true as a journey begins. We dribble through life's hurdles, breaking down its barriers, looking beyond the horizon. Lessons are learned, friendships are forged and strength is birthed from within. Beyond tactics and goals, we strive as a team. With discipline and perseverance, we advance. Through every kick, stumble, and victory, our lives are changing, and together we rise. It's not just a game. Football is our life. The St. Lucia Semi-Pro Football League, leveraging football to transform lives. Listen to the comments and I've heard some of the feedback on it and I think um, first of all I support the call that Tim Murphy should withdraw his comments and apologize. I, I think it's a decent thing to do. 
I mean, I, 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 there are times we all say things out of turn. Sometimes we say it without really reflecting on it. Sometimes we say it out of anger. And we have to have the character where we can say, ah, I messed up there, let me take that one back. And all of us, if I say anything I believe that would have offended anybody, I think I will apologize. And because we're not perfect, and I'm not perfect, and he's not perfect. And the comments he made were highly offensive, insensitive, lacked any empathy, it lacked even a historical understanding of the situation of Haiti. I think he should really reflect on what he said and to withdraw it. And this is not even politics. This is not partisan politics. Timothy and I disagree on, part, on party politics. I mean, he has his side. I'm uh, from the Central Labour Party. I'm minister in the government. And he's an advocate of the opposition. So he's speaking on my behalf. He says that I am an advocate for the opposition. I am no such thing. When I'm on this broadcast... When I am on Newsmaker Live, um, when I'm on the outside, my personal and private dealings, I am no advocate for no United Workers Party. I'm no advocate for the Senate. Administration is in office right now. We have to hold it accountable. It's happening in this country, it is presiding over those issues. It can make a difference. It is also responsible for the public purse, and we have to ensure that we keep the government um, on the straight and narrow. That does not make me an advocate for the opposition. So I am no advocate for the opposition. I like to see myself as somebody who's looking after the interest of the wider St. Lucian society as opposed to any group or entity or political organization. 452-2979, WhatsApp calls and messages 716-2026. Uh, let's see there. We have a WhatsApp call. Good afternoon. This is Newspin. You are on the air. Good afternoon. Yes, Timothy. Good, Good afternoon to you. Yes, I sir. had to call again. Mm -hmm. Timothy, you remember when the 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 volcano erupted in Monstrat? Mm -hmm. Remember yeah. that? I mean, you, you remember some of the? I mean, they, there were persons. The British took their people and they went. But you you remember they had um, donkeys there? Yeah. And where they where they send the donkeys? Some of them came to Saint Lucia. Right. Now we have a humanitarian crisis where we have persons in a, I want to say a war or a, a violent environment. I mean, how insensitive can we be as a people? If the people need a place to, to dwell for some tranquility, it's not that we're going to accept. We were ready to accept donkeys. But we are not ready to accept human beings. Wow. That is an all-time low. I have never heard something so foolish, so ridiculous, and so insensitive like this. And it speaks a lot to whether we want anything positive to happen in Haiti. Thank you. Thank you so much. In the chat room, somebody says, imagine this man asking for an apology from Tim. Had he apologized for his comments made in Dominica, then he would have some legitimacy uh, for the request. Request uh, an apology from yeah, Tim. Yeah. So that's coming from somebody in the chat room. So not every time somebody asks you uh, for an apology or you should, re uh, you should apologize, or in the case of a politician, you ought to resign, that you ought to resign or you will resign. But if you believe in what you have just said um, and um, people are calling for you to withdraw and to apologize, it is for you to determine whether what you said was wrong or not. I guess um, that can apply. If, if I say something that seemed to be unacceptable to you, it does not mean I should be apologizing to you for it so i think i guess that can be applied to the national security minister there's mm -hmm. been request for him to resign yeah and he hasn't 
and he hasn't, and calls for people to apologize, and they have not. I, I listen to some of the talk show hosts, you know, I listen to some of them today, and, you know, they are pontificating, and one individual said that this will be held against me, you know, the people of St. Lucia will hold this against me. I mean, so many things that, have, that are beyond my control, and they've held it against me, so me having made that statement, you'll hold it against me. If it was a, a, a situation whereby, let's say, you know, they raped somebody and, and, and so on, I, I mean, I would be very much concerned about people thinking the worst of me and holding this against me. But 10, 15, 20 years from now, you want to hold this against me? If I'm still alive, you think that ought to affect me? Imagine Kimani. If you were to lose sleep over what people think of you, mm -hmm. I, I mean, be here. what would happen to you? If I have to think and lose sleep over what people think of me, and in most instances, people who don't know me, people I have never met, and in some cases, people I myself have never seen, and the kind of things that they say about me, what would I be today? So, I am not taking this to heart. Let's talk about it will be held against me. I do not pay much attention to what people think about me. It will be as decent, not perfect, but I try to be as decent as possible. Because the people who judge you, I mean, they are the people who have the most faults, you know. Okay? I mean... You know, so I mean, I, I don't, con I don't, I don't focus on those things like what people think about me and so on. And and um, I've said this a couple of times. I mean, even to the annoyance of one particular manager, that I never aim to please people. It's very difficult to please people. I mean, you have so many people on the on the planet, the face of the planet, over eight billion people. In the case of Senusha, about one hundred and eighty thousand people. You think I will? aim or endeavor to please all those people, I can't do it. But I, I aim to please just a couple people. Just a couple. I hope I'm included in that list, Tim. You are. <laughs> <laughs> in the chat room, someone says, I think RF was being sarcastic, referring to his nomination of the Miku South MP as deputy speaker. Another comment, I totally agree with love from a distance for Haitians. Tim, love them with a long spoon supplies but there's inadequate space to accommodate them my opinion someone in the youtube chat says all countries in the region should open their doors to help our brothers and sisters from haiti who are trying to survive the gang rule in haiti it must be done well and all individuals must be seen well, good afternoon this is dion spain you're on the air good afternoon tim yes good afternoon to you caller good afternoon tim good afternoon and how are you doing i am fine I want to ask you a question. Did Joachim Henry ever apologize to Guy Joseph? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay, I rest my case. All right. Thank you so much. 452-2979. WhatsApp calls and messages 716-2026. We have another call. Good afternoon. You're on the air? Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Timothy Polio. Good afternoon to you, sir. You see, he let that need to apologize for the people in St. Lucia. Because when they say justice being served, he had to apologize and admit what he do was wrong. And he knew it was wrong too. Doesn't matter how you try and explain to him. He come up with all kind of Jimmy flicks. And it's, a, it's on the internet, that's why I see it. So that's how I see it. So he did need to come on your show. And apologize for the people of St. Lucia. That's my contribution. All right, sir. Thank you so much. 452-2979. WhatsApp calls and messages 716-2026. Um, somebody says that Tim Play PJP clip saying St. Lucia is the only country that think tourism will be back at pre-COVID level. And ask you to tell PJP to be man enough to take statement back since we all make errors. We have another call. Good afternoon. This is New Spain. You're on the air. <laughs> Timothy, a pleasant good afternoon to you and your listeners all over the world. PW on the line, Timothy. 
Timothy, for about a week, I have been listening to your analysis of the situation in Haiti. And the only person I could commend on the precise analysis of the situation in Haiti is Sarah Flood Bobret, Timothy. Timothy, you are a product of the Western educational system. And you have been educated by them. I am going to say, first of all, I would like to say, I do not agree with that Bajan guy when he said whatever he said about you. But one thing that I know is if a country has good governance, like Haiti, and it starts from the politicians, not from the people. It starts from the politicians of Haiti. If a country has good governance, the country will be running properly. The problems of Haiti is not barbecue. A lot of us tend to pretend that the, the, the problems of Haiti is barbecue. It's not. It's the politicians and the globalists, this is what is the problem. A lot of outside interference in Haiti. I listened to a gentleman uh, from the Air Force. He called earlier on and he said Anthony Blinken was in Jamaica and he pledged 100, 200, 3 million, 3, um, and 3 million, 100 million dollars. What he thinks that is as an American, he thinks that's petty cash. For Haiti, it is petty cash. Tell him that's what somebody spends in ice cream for five years. If the Americans serious about democracy in Haiti, they should pledge more money. The Caribbean island, which consists of more than, more than 300 islands, they should open up their borders to Haitian people. We have restrictions on visas for Haitians all over the Caribbean. If we, con we consider in CARICOM, Haiti is a member of CARICOM. We do not open our borders for, for Haitians. I cannot be a member of an, an, an organization and their borders are not open for my citizens. You know, I cannot be a member. So what people are talking about? We are even making the problem worse for Haiti as Caribbean leaders. Can I say who is part of the transitional council in Haiti? Who have appointed them? Who are the members of that transitional council? You understand? The last time Haiti had one of the strongest person in office as a president and the country was doing good, was Jobatro Aristi, and the Americans were very instrumental in actually housing Jobatro Aristi. So when the Americans trying to pay lip service to what is happening in Haiti, they're just talk. It's just talk. We all need to do better for Haiti so Haiti can become a better country in the Caribbean. Barbecue is not the only problem. The, the, the wealth of the country needs to be distributed properly. And I can tell you, governance is another problem and security. Timothy, I thank you. Thank you so much for calling, sir. 452-2979. Your WhatsApp calls and messages 716-2026. Any more comments in the chat room, Kimani? Someone says, PW, take some at your home and take responsibility, full responsibility for them. Uh, another comment, if we open our doors to them, where will we send them, if you fought? Tim, it's all good for us to open our doors, but we have to be sure that those coming in are our brothers and sisters and not our enemies that will be coming in to cause more problems for law enforcement. We already can't handle our own and would not like additional problems for us. Tim, is there a comedy relief segment on you, Spin? That second statement by this so-called Bayesian guy should be played on your show as comedy relief for your listeners because this latest statement is real comedy. If we were not clear on his agenda in the first statement, the second statement makes it very clear of his agenda. The second statement is clearly political, comedy relief. Another comment. Uh, 
um, Haiti has to face its own music and get their act together and stop killing each other. We all need to do that for St. Lucia nursing. Remove the wax from your eyes first. Another comment, someone says, PW, go marry a few Haitians and bring them to St. Lucia. We have our own crime problems, or have we all forgotten? That's it. Thank you so much. By the way, today is International Read to Me Day. You know, there's a day for every occasion. International Read to Me Day. So I'm going to read to you, Kimani, okay? <laughs> and this is extracted from the Moral Agenda Crusader Editorials of the Year 1993. And that is by George Audrum. So put, keep the graphic on as we observe International Read to Me Day. That's when you read, parents normally read to their children. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all about. <laughs> so I'm reading to you, Kipani. Others will listen. And this is once again extracted from the Moral Agenda, Crusader Editorials of the Year, 1993, Shafting the Tax Pay. I'm reading only to Kimani. The concept of democracy is not skin deep, nor is it lip serviced. It depends on a genuine acceptance of the equality of man. To be really democratic, we must see every man as having the capacity to reason and exercise a valid choice if given the basic tools of learning and the opportunity to participate in the conduct of the affairs of his society. We must also cultivate the generosity of spirit which would recognize the right of other men to have a choice or a viewpoint which is essentially different from ours. These are basic philosophical points which are almost in danger of becoming truisms. Yet, the organization of our society often deny men and women the right to participate and the right to contribute to the shaping of their own environment. Some political parties and organizations eschew, which is the word means avoid, eschew the path of political education of the ordinary man in the misguided belief that lifting the veil of ignorance would create additional problems, aspirations, and ambitions. Such a policy perspective leads to a distorted view of the state which requires its citizens to contribute their taxes to the general wealth but offers little or no compensation for their effort. In such a lopsided state, the taxes are used to facilitate and further entrench an exploiting class, while the underlings, who ironically enough are the most consistent taxpayers, hardly seem to benefit from the common purse. In the Caribbean, we were off to a bad start when a misreading of the investment by invitation policy took us down the garden path of self-negation. Self-negation opens the door to a blind veneration for things foreign and this led our leaders into a bending posture in which our citizens pay the piper and the investors call the tune. This mindset has bred a kind of parasitism in our, in our Sanusian society, which is exploited to the hilt by visitors, investors, ambitious whites, and adventures of all sorts. Our entire economy is postulated on the basis of tax relief for investors and our hotel operators. Wave of import duties immediately set them apart from ordinary citizens who are compelled to pay these imposition. Consequently, the trading sector is rigged in favor of foreign investors while our citizens carry the full brunt of the tax burden. That's part of the editorial, Shafting the Tax Payer, extracted from the Moral Agenda, Crusader Editorials of the Year 1993, and just read part of this editorial to Kimani on this international Read to me, D. Any more comments in the chat room, Kimani? Someone says, what irks me is that people can, uh, that people watch CNN and suddenly become experts. 
How many people can find Haiti on a map apart from what they think they know from the movies that Haiti practices voodoo, SMH? We have a WhatsApp call. That's our final call. Good afternoon to you. This is News Pinion on the air. Yes, good afternoon to you, ma'am. You are on the air. Okay, this is my first time calling your show. Yeah, thanks for calling. I have a situation that I need a certain company, I should say, to handle for me, for us. No, I mean, not me, me, us. I live in a community, I live in Library, Black Bay Library. That's quarter of Library. Call it Black Bay. There's Library, Black Bay View Fort and Black Bay Library. Now, the area where I live belongs to Proud. And... um. Those um, of us that are living in that area, there was a time Proud used to come every, like, every two weeks, holding meetings with the community, that um, encouraging people to purchase their land. And if they don't purchase their land, the land can be sold to some other persons and, you know, and blah, 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 blah. Every time they come and they, they, they hold meetings with us and whatever. So... A lot of people, the whole area have been bought. And um, there was no road. It's only bush and trees and everything. So everybody who had their lot, what they did, they did not wait on proud to cut road and things like that. But they promised that they would cut the road, and road in that area and everything. Now, people did not wait for um, proud to cut road to their lot. Everybody, you know, cut their, their road up to their lot and so forth. All right. Now, everybody has bought, the, the, the whole area has been sold. Now for them to cut the road, pro give us proper roads to our homes, it is a problem. Proud is not answering calls. Now, some people, we in the area decide that, well, okay, if they are not doing it, we are going to do it. They said, no, they do not want us to do it. And, and team, people's vehicles are by the road. They cannot park their vehicles by their house. And people's vehicles have been um, 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 ac um, accidents have been, have been happening into people's vehicles. There was one time a neighbor had a vehicle, his vehicle by the road, and another vehicle in the middle of the night, three o'clock in the morning, just fly over his vehicle. Mom, I don't know how it managed to get over. Just sit on top of the other vehicle by the road, and you know now people is just stealing people's vehicles, and we cannot get a response from crowd at all. So I don't know if Proud is listening. We in that community, we are saying to Proud, if they do not want to do the road, they are saying they don't have money, but they have. Uh, we they bought we 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 bought land from them. There are some people that are paying by fees, like every month they will give her money. There are some people who took their loan and they pay off their land, and we cannot find proper road. Our vehicle cannot come by our house. So, Tim, I am calling on Proud to come the same the same way they wanted our money. They wanted us to buy the land, which was very good. I appreciate today. I have a lot of my own. I appreciate that. The same way I want them to come and hold meetings with us, telling us that they are going because they have our monies. They are saying it's government. Government saying it's not them. I have my I spoke to um a representative of my rep, he said that does not that have nothing to do with government. They say it is government that have to do road. So Tim, we are fed up and we are tired. I if I have um um something to bring up, I have no vehicle wants to come up by my house, by our house, because the road is very bad. Because we just cut it to come to to you know to to call, go out to our lot. So it's not proper. When it's raining, Tim, oh my God. If our house is not, not properly built, the water, because it's a mountainous place, it's hills, mm. there's hills, okay. water is just washing people, there's no no gutter. The, team, the place is in a mess. So I am calling on Proud to tell Proud, come and hold a meeting with us to tell us what to do or come and show us where to cut, what to do, where to put drainage, and we will do it and they will give us part of our monies back. All right. Thank you so much for calling the broadcast, ma'am. We hope that something of note will come out of uh, your concerns that you have clearly expressed on this program. But as far as I can remember, PROUD is the program for the regular regularization of unplanned development. 
think persons were occupying lands um, that they did not have any title to over several years, um, the government at some point in time would have decided um, to grant them the opportunity to purchase those lands and that would have a subsidized cost. So I don't know after that what happens and which agency is responsible um, in terms of putting the necessary infrastructure in place for you and the other persons who, have, who would have purchased the lands under such circumstances. So we'll endeavor maybe by tomorrow or the day after to get some answers on behalf of yourself and other persons who have been impacted. Our new spin, news of the day. Only God can change this place. Haitians see no end to spiraling violence. According to the BBC, that's our news spin news of the day. According to the BBC, only God can change this place. Haitians see no end to spiraling violence. That is the broadcast. Thank you so much for watching and listening to the most monitored talk show in the world. And that's New Spin. My name is Tim Enjoy your Tuesday. Until noon, 12.30.